Hi YouTube! In this video I want to show you a mid-range 64-bit LTE dual SIM phone that I got from the Zopo mobile shop. This phone is called the Zopo ZP530 Touch. Comes in a white box like this one, it says flash right here and it has some specs on the back that are actually correct. Comes with a 5 volt USB wall charger, comes with a micro USB data and charging cable. They also included some headphones that I never tested. It also comes with an English quick start guide. The Zopo Mobile Shop also included a screen protector. And last but not least, they also included a flip case. This phone has a 5 inch capacitive 10 point multi touch screen with a 720 by 1280 HD pixel resolution. It is an IPS display and it also looks like a one glass solution. It has the MT6732 64 bit quad core CPU inside, which is clocked at 1.5 GHz. It has 1 GB of RAM, 8 GB of internal memory, and it also supports TF cards. Right now it is running on Android 4.4.4 KitKat. It is a quad band, it is totally unlocked, it supports 3G and it also supports 4G slash LTE. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, AGPS, it also supports GLONASS and Baidu. It has a G sensor, a proximity sensor, a light sensor, a magnetic field sensor and it also has a breathing light home button. It supports USB on the go, it supports firmware updates over the air, it has air gestures and a smart wake function. It has two cameras, one main camera with an 8 megapixel output, autofocus and LED flash and it's a f2.4 and one front facing camera with a 5 megapixel output also f an f2.4 and of course this phone is a dual SIM dual standby phone. It weighs about 142 grams and it is about 8.6 millimeters thick. Let's take a closer look at the device, you have your front facing camera right here and hidden right there is a proximity and light sensor. The home back and menu buttons are soft touch buttons and they light up nicely. On the bottom we can find a microphone. On the left side we have a power button. On top we have a 3.5mm headphone jack and your USB port. On the right side we can find a volume rocker. And on the back we can see it has a main camera, this is where your LED flash is. We have some speakers on the bottom. And if I can get this open for you I can show you the inside of the phone. On the inside we can see that it takes two SIM cards, one regular size SIM card, one micro SIM card, this is your TF card slot and this is a 2100 milliamps battery. Like always I installed additional apps and games for demonstration purposes. If you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment sections below and if you like to find out more please stay tuned. The stock launcher is fast and snappy, actually there is nothing very special about the stock launcher. I mean there are no fancy widgets pre-installed or theme support, but the firmware is quite clean. There is absolutely no Chinese bloatware installed on this phone, but it did have some apps which I removed right away. Something like um, Twitter and Facebook and WhatsApp. I believe those are apps that you should rather install by yourself. Let's start by going into the settings, let's check out about the phone. Right here we can see it's running on Android 4.4.4 right now. And right here we can also find the wireless updates. And this definitely works because I already got a firmware update ever since I got the phone. Let's check out the languages and input. Let's see which languages are supported right now on this firmware. Let me just scroll through them so you can see if your native language is supported or not. Those are all the languages. Back into the settings. What else do we have next? We have a smart wake function. This is like um, you can double tap to wake the screen. Let's just give it a try. And it's working. What else do we have in the settings? We can check out the storage. And right here you can see that um, the entire internal memory can be used as a phone storage so you can install all the apps and games into just one memory which is always great. We also have air gesture settings right here so you can wipe above the proximity sensor, 
to flick through the gallery, camera, music and launcher, but believe me, this is bullshit. You are never gonna use this. This is totally useless in my opinion. Let's check out the display settings. Right here we can see that it supports Myra Vision. So you can customize the picture mode from standard vivid user mode. You can also change the dynamic contrast if you'd like to. So this is definitely something you can play with. Also in the display settings we can um, set up the breathing light home button so it will pulsate and light up and down for charging or if the battery is low or, low or you can also use it as a notification LED for missed events. Let's go back, let's go into more, let's go into mobile networks and right here you can see that you can choose your preferred networks types and you can also freely select which one of your SIM cards is supposed to be the data SIM card. I think that should cover the settings. Let me go into the engineer mode for you. Let me go into band mode and in this case I set it on SIM 2. Right here you can see that it is a quad band those are all the um, 3G frequencies that are supported and let's check out the LTE bands. It supports band 3, 4, 5, 7, 17 and great news it also supports band 20 and those are all the bands. Please make sure to check with your service provider if your frequencies are supported or not. Back into the stock launcher, what can we check out next? Let's start with some Google Apps. Of course the Play Store comes pre-installed and is working just fine, so there is nothing to worry about. Let's check out Google Maps. No, I want to skip and it found my location right away. We can do some zooming, we can rotate the screen. Let's see if Street View is working. Let me load a random address. Let's go into Street View and Street View is working just fine. We can zoom in and out and we can also test the compass mode. So right here you can see that a magnetic field sensor is definitely built in because the compass mode is working. Next up let's give uh, YouTube a try. Let me turn down the volume for this. I don't want to break any copyright laws. Let's just play a random video volume is down, it is loading and let me go into the settings and show you that the maximum quality is a 720p resolution right here. Of course we can also watch in full screen and YouTube is running smoothly so absolutely no problem here. That should cover the uh, uh, Google Apps. Next up, let's check out some benchmarks. Let's see what Hen Tutu has to say. It scores at close to 32,000 points, which is not bad at all. Let's check out some info. We can see it's running on Android 4.4.4 and this is your CPU and GPU and HD resolution. The rear camera has 8 megapixels. We have 1 GB of RAM, which is a little sad. We can see it is a 64-bit system uh, CPU right here. We can check out the display and the multi-touch. And as I mentioned before, this phone has a 10-point multi-touch. See if I can get 10 fingers on it, which is not so easy. It says 9. There we have it. It is a 10-point multi-touch. And let me scroll all the way down to check out the sensors. Now here are all the supported sensors. But of course I'm also going to test the sensors for you. So let's start the sensor box for Android and let's go back. We can see it has an accelerometer also known as the G sensor right here and it's working fine. We have a light sensor. I don't know if it's working right now. Yes it is. We also have an orientation sensor also working fine. Of course we also have a proximity sensor and no surprise here that it's also working. 
we have a magnetic field sensor and it's getting readings and we also have a sound sensor or better we have two we have one main microphone right here on, on the back which I forgot to mention is that we also have a secondary noise reduction microphone right there now that should pretty much cover the sensor let's check out CPU Z as you can see it's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz and it has uh, four cores and again we have the sensors listed right here now those are all the sensors that are supported let's get out of there let's check out Nina mark I'm not gonna run the test I'm just gonna show you the result and on my last run it scored at 65.1 frames per second it's an open GL 3.0 and as you can see it has a full H uh, it has an HD resolution sorry about that and next up let me clear some memory and start the quadron standard uh, benchmark test and of course this is boring let me run a full benchmark and let me do a jump cut almost done and it scores at 10218 points back into the standard launcher let's check out the wi-fi signal strength and to give you an idea how good or bad it is let's compare it to my mi 4 and as you can see it has a very good wi-fi reception it is stronger than my xiaomi mi 4 and that is very impressive let's see what else can i show you let me go into the gallery let's just load some wallpapers and let's just flick through some pictures and it looks great and it's very fast and I don't know if you can see this but the colors brightness and contrast are great and it also has great viewing angles which I will show you later in more detail let's check out a movie this is my standard 1080p MKV movie and of course this is no surprise it's running very smoothly now that should cover the uh, gallery let's just go into the camera app real fast let me just take a random pictures even though I don't have much light right here and let's check out some of the details of the picture now the picture quality is very nice but of course that is something you need to judge for yourself let's check out some details and as you can see it has an 8 megapixel resolution and it's a f2.4 but there's really nothing special about the camera app it has all the standard features that all the MediaTek cameras have let me do a quick uh, phone call let me delete that and let's do a phone call let's choose this sim card let's check out the speaker so I guess the sound quality is pretty normal you can also check out the music player let me start a song which I have the license for and let's turn up the volume and let's check out the speaker is okay I guess nothing to get very excited about let's see what else can I show you let's go into the browser let's go into the bookmarks and let me load the BBC homepage and BBC is loading very fast zooming of course is no problem rotation speed is good but to be fair let's load the desktop side to see how this phone handles larger websites and there we have it it's loading fast 
and even it's a pretty huge website it can handle it very well so browsing should not be a problem at all last but not least let's try the USB on the go function let me hook up my USB thumb drive and let me go into the file manager and it should mount the external USB storage there you have it this is my thumb drive let me just load a random picture and it's working just fine I think this pretty much covers it let me just tell you what I'm thinking about this phone some thoughts about this device the build quality is very good I love the metal frame but the top and the bottom part are made out of plastic the display is very good for an HD display of course a full HD resolution would have been better but I think in this category it's really very good the performance is good it should be able to handle almost anything you throw at it the Wi-Fi reception is very good it beats my Xiaomi Mi 4 almost every time the GPS is excellent it is fast it is accurate the signal strength is very strong and thanks to GLONASS support it seems to be very stable the GSM 3G and 4G reception is very good at least with my service provider and in my area the call sound quality is good nothing to complain about the rear speaker is okay it actually produces a little bass but that's definitely nothing to get too excited about the camera picture quality is something you need to judge for yourself so please make sure to check out some sample pictures on my blog you can find a link in the video's description the LED flash is very weak it's only usable in very short distances and there are two things I don't like so much about this phone number one the battery it only has 2100 milliamps I mean this SOC is very energy efficient but still a bigger battery would have been better and number two this phone only has 1 GB of RAM I mean this is really not very up to date bottom line I think it's a very solid and reliable mid-range phone I think Zopo did a great job in this price range last but not least let me try to show you the viewing angles and do a little gaming thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time